It's Wednesday following the fourth Sunday of Easter, April the 28th, 2021. Good to be with you as we are being strengthened by Christ through his word with our daily devotion. Wednesday is our day to listen to the small catechism, and we've been up moving our way through the commandments, and so we're ready for the fifth commandment today. Uh, it's one uh, that uh, should resonate within our minds, very straightforward, and at first glance seems as if it is ever so simple. You shall not murder. Well... Of course, uh, you shouldn't take the life of somebody else. Remember, every commandment is about protecting a gift that God has given us. This is all about the gift of life from conception to natural death. We are to safeguard that good gift of life. And not only safeguard it, we should cherish it as God's good gift. But remember how the catechism even explains this. We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body but help and support him in every bodily need. And notice there that we are taken again back to the first commandment because all the commandments hinge upon that first commandment. We should fear and love God. Every commandment is about living out the fact that you have one true God and here is how he calls you to live. And again, it's about showing respect to the gift of life that he's given us. And notice also, it's not only about what you shouldn't do, don't hurt or harm your neighbor in his body, but it's also about what you should do help and support him in every bodily need, and therefore show uh, great joy in God's good gift of life. But still, there's a temptation here. The temptation is to say to myself, oh, I've got that under control, because after all, I don't harm people in their bodies. I don't hit people. I'm not only not taking anybody else's life, I don't go out and get into fights and such. But when we listen to Christ in his own word, and especially in the Sermon on the Mount, we learn that this is a struggle for all of us. So in Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 and 22, early on in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says this, You have been told, you shall not murder. So he's quoting the fifth commandment. But I am saying to you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And anyone who insults his brother will be held accountable. Now notice there that Jesus doesn't just, uh, as he unloads the fifth commandment, he's revealing for us the fullness of what the fifth commandment calls upon us to do. He not only focuses, uh, he doesn't leave it just as a physical action. He also says it's about what's going on within. This is why we even confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. So living by the fifth commandment even involves what is my attitude towards my brother, my fellow believer my fellow human being, my neighbor. And when I have anger or when I insult him, I am violating the fifth commandment. So who's guilty of breaking this commandment? We all are. But let's also take a flip to the positive side here. We are called to love our neighbor in his bodily need. So think about the opportunities you have to do that. There's plenty of them that you probably don't even think about. Living out the fifth commandment is a mother changing her child's diapers. A father feeding his children, husband and wife helping one another, children helping their aged parents with their needs, and on down the line. But it's not just within the family, it's within your friendships as well. The most natural way that the fifth commandment is lived out is in those close relationships where you just naturally help people in the midst of their need. But keep this also in mind. There is ultimately a fulfillment in Christ. When I look at my own life, what troubles me the most when it comes to the fifth commandment is not the uh, sins of commission, the things that I do that I ought not do. It's my sins of omission that trouble me the most. All the opportunities I am given to do good to somebody else, and yet I don't. But rejoice in this, that although I do not fulfill the fifth commandment of my own accord, it's been fulfilled in Christ on my behalf and on your behalf. He did not hurt or harm his neighbor, but instead he has helped and supported his neighbor in his every bodily need. And how does Christ do that? He does it by delivering your body from death to life everlasting. And he does it by himself going into death conquering death, coming forth from the grave, this great Easter message that we are still celebrating, that this commandment is fulfilled on your behalf by Christ. God himself cherishes life. So what does he do it? He preserves your life unto life everlasting. Let us pray. 
Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the good gift of life. Work in us a, our own cherishing of the gift of life and move in us so that we would love our neighbor, so that we would love him to the point of helping him in his bodily need and refraining from harming him in any way. We also ask, O Lord, that you would give us great joy in the fulfillment that Christ has made for us of this commandment, that our lives are so cherished by you that you would deliver them to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 